Okay, so welcome to Made You Look, eye-catching web design trends. My name is Alana Ruddick. Um, I am the founder and creative director at Design is Yummy. We are a Montreal-based design studio that creates consistent brand experiences across both web and print mediums. I've been working with WordPress since 2009 and designing WordPress websites as well as managing the development of WordPress sites. Everybody's nodding, yeah, cool. Perfect. Well, thanks for staying for the last session of the day. Hopefully, I can show you guys some interesting things that you haven't seen before. And if you're having deja vu, if you were here last year, it's because the topic is very similar to what I spoke on last year, but the material's new. So if you're here last year, don't worry, it's fresh, and it's hopefully will still be interesting. And just to get a sense of who's in the room, uh, raise your hand if you're a designer. Ooh, lots of designers, awesome. Developers, nice. Okay, so we've got a good mix. Bloggers. Miscellaneous? <laughs> if you're in the miscellaneous ca uh, category, just yell at one time what, what that means. OK, cool. Business? Marketing? Support? Awesome. Lots of people come in. Don't worry about it. OK, we're just getting started. So the goal of my talk today is just to show you guys what's new and interesting happening in terms of web design, design in general, and to discuss some easy and accessible ways that you can take some of these tips and apply them to your own websites, whether it's your website, your client's website, just to kind of bring a, a fresh new perspective to it. Um, all the slides are available on SlideShare. The link is up there if you want to take it. As well, uh, the slides are going to be shared, and this is being recorded for WordPress TV. So everybody smile at the camera and wave big and say, hey, we're Kev. That was so small. Aren't you guys having fun? <laughs> okay, one more time. Yay, WordCamp! <laughs> Woo! We're awake! All right. So before we get too deep into the presentation, the first thing I want to talk to you about is breakfast. So this is what I had for breakfast this morning. I had some yogurt. And why am I showing you my breakfast? The reason is because as I was sitting having my yogurt, I was looking at the new packaging design for Liberté's yogurt, and it embodies quite a few of the web trends that we're seeing. Uh, based on this graphic, anybody have any ideas of some of the trends we're going to be looking at? Nature, flowers. Nature, flowers. Colors. Hmm? Uh, large prints. Large prints, yeah. Circles. I'm not going to say yes or no to any of these. I'm just going to keep nodding. You'll find out as we go. Anybody else? Pastel colors. Illustration. Mm-hmm. Food marketing. Awesome. Sorry? Caps lock. Caps lock? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to come back to this at the end and see uh, which one of those apply. But the first trend that we are looking at is color. You're right. So bold colors and contrast. We're seeing a lot of use right now of vibrant, saturated colors. Uh, this is a website from Universal Love. It's a pretty cool site built around inclusivity. It's created by MGM Resorts in Vegas in partnership with Legacy Recordings. And it's all about the idea of a reimagined first dance wedding songs for all different types of couples. And what I like about this site is it's super graphic, it's bold, but it's really reflective. The design is really reflective of the theme of the website. It works, and it works really harmoniously. And when we're looking at the colors and what colors are going to be popular this year. I've said it before, but we do always look to Pantone color of the year. Why? Because whatever Pantone puts out really does trickle into every aspect of design, whether it's packaging, interior, print, web. We always see those colors being heavily influenced by Pantone. And it's important to note that this year's color is ultraviolet. It's not lavender. It's not purple. It's UV. It's ultraviolet. It's bright. It's neon. It's bold. When we're looking at neon colors, there's a reason that it's, I'm showing it here on a black background, right? In order to see a bright neon light, you have to have contrast. You have to have dark backgrounds and light surrounding it. You know, neon implies that light, that, you know, nighttime glow. You have to see, to, in order to see neon colors, it needs to be at night or in a glow. So you're seeing dark and light contrasts, and that's natural progression from UV. So if you're looking at the Pantone color and thinking, okay, it's UV, getting an idea, okay, then I may be seeing some bright and light and dark contrast as well. So an example of this is a website called uh, One World, One Face, and they're doing exactly that, where it's you have a high contrast site of dark and light, 
and mixed with that neon color, and it's quite similar to the Pantone color, that UV bright. That's why we're seeing bright blue everywhere. The theme of WordCamp this year, it's very on trend in terms of color. It trickles down into everything that we're seeing. This site is pretty cool as well. It's Epicureans. It's a creative conference that takes place in Yosemite National Park. And the idea is bringing together creatives in a natural environment and reconnecting with people and reconnecting with nature. And you're seeing actually quite a few trends in this website here, not just the bold colors. And it's a beautiful color palette of like sunset colors. But what we're also seeing is a full width website. That's something that we were seeing a lot of last year and we're seeing again. You're also seeing these monochromatic images across the bottom. We were seeing a lot of duotone images last year and now we're seeing a lot of monochromatic. So this, you know, you'll see in a lot of the examples that I'm showing you, they're not just fixated on one trend. A lot of them incorporate multiple trends. That doesn't mean you have to. If you have an existing site and you're looking for a way to refresh the look of it, you don't have to say, okay, take the checklist of all the different trends and let me do this one and this one and this one. Feel free to use your discretion, but there's ways that you can take small bits of these and update your site in a modern way without going crazy and having to reinvent the wheel on it. So, uh, this follows from what Megan Dove was saying earlier about being honest. When you're looking at bold colors, that can be overwhelming. If you're not a designer, you don't have a background in color theory, the idea of putting together a bold color palette may seem extremely scary and intimidating. So one way I like to think about color is if you want to add a pop of color, add just that, a pop of color. Stick with an elegant theme that's black, white, gray, or neutrals like navy, and add a bright color or one or two neon colors to it to make it interesting. Because otherwise, you might have a fear you're gonna end up with something like this. <laughs> and your users are not gonna wanna see that. It's a costing to the eye, right? So stick with something that's comfortable. Keep one or two bright colors. Or if you're feeling more bold and you want to try something new, there's a great resource uh, that I shared last year as well. It's the Adobe uh, Color Wheel, and it helps you create great complementary colors without having much experience. You can kind of play around, and it helps you create a beautiful color palette. Another resource that I shared last year as well, but I really like it and feel it, if you weren't here last year, it's worth sharing again. It's brandcolors.net. It's the largest collection of brand colors available, and it shows you the different color codes for some of the most influential brands today. So that's interesting to see, you know, if you're in the same space as one of these brands, maybe you want to stick with colors that are different from them, because you're not going to be necessarily competing with one of these major players. So how can you stand out and show something different? Yeah. Yes. You can basically take the color picker. So let's say you, you, you have a client that has a logo that's blue and red. So you, you can select these dials and cho choose those two colors and maybe come up with a color scheme that's complementary if you want to use a couple more colors to complement those two colors as well. No, 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 no. It, the color wheel kind of adjusts as you play around with it. So it'll give you suggestions based on if you input one color or you can just have fun and play around. Sometimes you come up with something beautiful that inspires you if you, don't, if you aren't working with an existing brand already. Perfect. So the next way we see color being used, I'm focusing a lot on color because I think it's important. And it can be scary to go out there and try and find ways to use bold colors, and that is what is popular now. So I'm showing you a couple of ways that make it a bit more palatable for your own sites. I love this example. This is La Pierre qui tourne. It's um, a custom WordPress website. And you see there are quite a few bold colors being used in it, but it's one color per header, and the illustrations used are in tints and tones of the same color. Hand-drawn illustrations were really popular last year. They're still continuing to be popular this year in web design, but by having the illustration in the same tints or tones as the background, it makes it pretty neutral looking. Another thing to think about when you're talking about color and color contrast is legibility. It's super important when you're working with color to make sure that no matter what colors you're using, you're making sure that there's enough contrast in them so that your site is legible to your audience. You, know, you don't want users coming to your site and saying, oh, it's so beautiful, I couldn't read anything on it. Your clients won't be very happy either. Uh, a great tool for this is Web AIM. So you can input your foreground and background color into the color checker, and it'll give you a pass-fail to let you know 
if your color contrast is high enough or whether you need to adjust it. So that's something that I would suggest doing at the start of your present uh, of your presentation, at the start of your website design before you get too far into presenting it to the client and selling them on a color palette that's not going to work. All right. So from here, we're moving to custom illustration. You already may have noticed that we've seen some examples of illustration in different styles in the other websites that I was showing you. Last year, we were seeing a trend for a lot of flat design, uh, which was fun and nice for designers because it's a super easy, simple style to do. So a lot of web designers and illustrators were like, yay, I'm so happy this is popular. It takes two minutes to do. Well, things are getting a little more complicated for us, but that's OK. It's a good challenge. Uh, we're seeing a lot of illustration styles now that are a bit more personalized. They're more unique feeling. There's more texture to them. There's more visual interest. And I think that's important to note because it's no longer the case that a lot of, you know, that yes, there are a lot of startups, but it's not, you know, five, ten years ago when clients would come to you and say, I don't have a website at all. I need your help. Now it's more like I have a website. It's not giving me enough traction. It's not standing out against the competition. What can I do to make it stand out in a sea of other websites? So these are some tools that you can use. Uh, this site is for Amazonia font. It's a multidisciplinary project between a type designer. Are you seeing anything? Yeah, OK. I, I see nothing on here. Um, between a type designer, a web developer, and a web designer, and an illustrator. So the illustrator on this one was a person named Soledad Aguila. And I think it's her illustrations of 26 animals that are from the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. It, I'm going to slow down. Sorry. <laughs> OK. So the purpose of this project was to create awareness about the threat to wildlife of the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. So this artist created 26 custom illustrations with the goal of bringing life to that font. And personally, I think without these endangered animal illustrations, this website doesn't give me a whole lot. So it really adds to it. So if you're thinking, is my project one that merits the cost of hiring an illustrator or my time to illustrate the project, think about what it adds to your project. Does it give you something solid that will make your website stand out and breathe life to it? In terms of illustration styles, we're seeing a style in print quite a bit. Um, these are two illustrations done by Anna Strumpf. And she's an amazing illustrator. And what she does a lot of is illustrations on top of fashion magazines, on top of celebrity and model photographs. And I think this is a style that's going to transition into web quite a bit. The next trend that we're going to look at is stri striking typography. So some people earlier were noticing the typography on that packaging I showed. And that's definitely something that we're seeing. So this is Good Fortune. It's a concept restaurant by Corey Small and Chef Ryan McDonald in Missouri. When I think cutting edge web design, I don't always think Missouri. I haven't been there. No offense to anybody if they're from Missouri. But I really do love this website. Um, to give you a look at it there. So this is a restaurant website. And as well, they sell apparel. It doesn't, you know, when I think of a Chinese food restaurant, I don't think of a Gothic type, type like this. But I think it works really well. And the large font on it looks awesome. You've got the, on the right hand side, you've got some vertical type. I think it just is something fresh and different. Those. This is a website for Core 77. It's a creative conference in Brooklyn that talks about how to launch, grow, and evolve your creative business. So it's not surprising that a conference that's geared towards creative is using web design trends and creative typography. I'm not suggesting you go and go onto your corporate client websites and start making all the types super funky. You have to know your audience and when it's appropriate to use these things. And you're seeing those monochromatic images here again. And at the end, a little micro animation, which we'll get into more as well later. If you're thinking about typography and, OK, where can I go to get some great fonts, or where can I go to get some inspiration for type? Uh, Typekit is a great place. It's attached to the Adobe Creative Suite. You can browse thousands of beautiful fonts. And you can search by font type. And you can also upload images of, let's say you've seen some font in a magazine that you're like, oh, I really love that. Or on another website, you can take a screenshot or um, just a photograph of it and upload those images. And it'll spit back at you some suggestions of similar types. Another site I love is Fonts in Use. Guess what it has? Fonts in Use. <laughs> so self-explanatory, but it's a really great example. And it will just help inspire you. 
This is kind of, the next one I'm sharing is my secret weapon. So don't share it everywhere, or do. <laughs> but this is a site by a type design, designer, not a type designer, just a typography lover. Uh, it's called Type Wolf. It's by Jeremiah Schof, and it's an amazing resource. It has beautiful websites that have striking typography, uh, examples that are updated regularly, as well as some awesome top 10 lists. For example, you know, top 10 fonts instead of Helvetica or all different kinds of stuff. When we're talking about striki striking typography, this is a custom WordPress site for a US-based candy maker. And I love the, the fun type they have here. You still have bold colors as we scroll through. And when you get to the bottom there, you may notice the year in the footer. So this site is from 2016. So it's not old, but in web, that's, that's a while. It's two years. But they've done things to still keep it modern. Those bold colors are still relevant. I, had, I didn't see this site in 2016, so I don't know if they've changed it since or you know, updated some of those colors or images. But you know, food typography was something we were seeing everywhere in 2016. You can go five minutes on social media without scrolling through Instagram and seeing somebody building something with food. Uh, it's actually something we had done as well in our studio for our holiday card in 2016. That's a little behind the scenes when we were um, creating the food typography. And, but I think the way we see it used in that other candy makers website is super interesting. They're taking a trend that was heavy in print and social media and finding an interesting way to make it even more dynamic in web. So this was our final piece. And yes, this is print, this is not web. So why am I showing you this? Because I really feel that it all relates. When you see a design trend, design trends are global. They're not just specific to print or to web. One translates to the other all the time, and we always see a crossover of trends one way or the next. So as a web designer, as a web developer, if you're looking around you, look in the real world. Look to interior design. Look to all different spaces that you can grab inspiration from. Don't just feel that you have to see only what's existing in web in order to know what's coming or what's, what you should be working on now. So along that same line, um, we're seeing a lot of type in, in print, we've been seeing this for a while, but I really think this is moving towards web as well. It's the interplay of objects, elements, with the typography. So you see the models are in front of the type, behind it. There's a really nice interaction between the, the images and the type. And that's something I think is going to come into web as well quite a bit. Another popular trend that we're seeing that's slowly coming into print design is this idea of glitch. So you see kind of that distortion happening on the first image there. And that's something that's going to come into web as well, I believe. The other image on the right is an example of deconstructed type. You know, you can see it says unexpected, but it's not linear. It's deconstructed. It's kind of chaotic. And I th that's not a new concept in, in print design, but I do think it's going to come over to web more as well because of the next trend that we're seeing more of now, which is broken grids and freeform. So that kind of broken, deconstructed look really lends itself very well to this trend. So I think we're going to start to see a mix of them together. This is a website. It's a custom WordPress site for a museum in Denmark. And you can see this is an example of a freeform site. So there isn't a very defined grid. It's not boxy. It's not modular. You're seeing it. You know, you see a full bleed color background. Now you see an image that's close cut. Now you see an image that's on the left, on the right. The background changes. It's kind of very free flowing. And you may not totally see a pattern to it. There is a logic to it, but it is a broken grid on purpose. This website, unfortunately, the, the video doesn't do justice to how cool this website is. It's a Gucci Spring Summer Collection. If you have a chance, I highly recommend going to check it out. It's one of the coolest websites I've seen in a very long time. I'm sure their budget was ridiculous on this thing. Um, this is a little unattainable for most of us because it's just chalked full of animation. It's really cool, but if you have a chance, Google it or just click on the link from the presentation. It's very cool. But when you think about broken grids and freeform websites and then you try and translate into mobile, what do you do? How, how can you conceptualize something that's that free-flowing into mobile? And we should all be thinking about mobile design first. Almost 50% of users are accessing your website from their mobile device first or maybe only. So I think the best way to translate a website that's either, well, really any website design into mobile is with a one-column design. So with mobile, think one column 
And it, even though this is one column, you still kind of get that free-flowing concept from it because of the animations, because of other things going on in the design, that it doesn't feel that dissimilar from the desktop version. So a little disclaimer. Before you can think about breaking the grid, think about all the reasons that a grid is good for the design. It creates a logical flow for the user. It creates a template and a hierarchy of elements that you can use for other pages to keep things consistent. And so if you're going to break the grid in, your, in a website that you're working on, think about why am I breaking the, the grid? Is it good for the design? And make sure that you still define a strong grid so that when you break it, it's obvious that you're breaking it. Uh, for example, an easy way to do that would be, let's say if you have a site that's all in white and then you have an element, an image that's close cut or it comes out of a frame that's darker. So it's kind of breaking through its own frame. Even though it's not breaking the grid per se, it still creates that appeal and that's something that's more accessible for most people to work on. Next trend that we're seeing that we've been seeing for a long time is negative space. And uh, you know, Apple's been doing it for years. This is an example of a website from Wealth Simple, and it's got a really cool little Rube Goldberg animation in it that continues down. You should check it out. It's, it continues throughout the whole site. It's simple, which it should be for a site named Wealth Simple, um, but it's really effective. Before you can think about having a site that has a lot of negative space, if a client comes to you and says, I love the look of minimalism, I want something that's like this, ask to see their copy. You know, Megan had touched on this earlier, um, but it has to be concise. You can't have a site that has a lot of negative space if it's jam-packed with copy. So that's something to make sure that you explain in terms of expectations to clients, and also expectations to yourself. You know, it's important to know what you're working with and pare down the content as much as possible. I think that goes, even if you're not working on a minimalist site, I think it's important to explain to clients that the web is a different animal from print, and the way we interact with a site is different. The less copy, the more straightforward, the better. Uh, if your client is insisting on having a lot of copy, or if you need a lot of copy just for the type of industry you're in, consider the technique of chunking. So that's kind of breaking your content and your copy up into smaller digestible pieces. The same goes for, let's say, a checkout process. So if you have an e-commerce website, um, that checkout form, if you have 25 fields that the customer needs to fill out on the first page, they're gonna bounce. They're, they're not gonna be interested in doing that. But instead, if you make it like a four-step process and each step has you know five oh, just five little fields to fill out, it all of a sudden becomes a lot more palatable. So the next trend we're looking at is micro animations. So that's some small little animations that are happening. They can either add delight or function or let the user know that they're doing something or something's happening. So in this website here, you see it over hovering over the logo and then when it's hovered as well over the contact information. Something else that's happening in this website that's another trend that's on the up and up is particle backgrounds. So we've seen a lot of full bleed videos for a long time, um, but those are heavy and they're, they take a long time to load on a site. So we're seeing more and more of these particle style backgrounds, which are pretty cool. So if you're thinking, I am not a developer, I have no idea what you're talking about in terms of you know, making a particle background and um, how do I apply a technique like this to my site? So this is something we've done on our own, on Design is Yummy's website, uh, where we've just done a really simple hover effect. So if you see when you hover over those leaves on the bottom or on that sunset, there's just a little gradient effect. It just lets the user know something is happening, there's something going on with them, but it's not complicated. It doesn't have to be. This is an example of microanimation that really breathes life into the site. It's super fun, it's engaging, and it just adds a little something. You know, there's a slight bounce that I had. It makes it feel light and airy. If you're at my talk last year, you may recognize this example. It's, um, this is a custom WordPress site from Le Cafe Noir Studio, and it's their shopping cart. It's a WordPress checkout, and I just love their add to cart feature. Check it out. If it's going. It's super cute. So. This is actually a new website. Since I did the talk last year, they completely changed their website, but they kept the exact same micro animation. Why? Because everyone loves it, right? It's cute. It really is reflective of the brand. It's a Dutch brand by Lizzie Vanderlight, and ev all the products on there are very fun, quirky, and that's exactly what that micro animation does for them. So if it's not broke, you know, you don't have to fix it. They reuse pieces. So if you create something cool, you can keep reusing it, even if it's not necessarily from yesterday. 
So I'm not a wizard. Um, <laughs> if, during my presentation, you may have heard me mention at a few points, uh, whether it's a WordPress theme or whether it's a custom WordPress theme, that's because I do my homework. I'm not a wizard. So there's websites like What WP Theme Is That or WP Sniffer, um, which is a browser plugin that detects active versions of WordPress and will even give you the URL of what theme is being used. Um, it's fun for just beyond you know, stalking websites that you like. We have a client that approached us a few weeks ago and was presenting some examples of websites they really like from competitors. And they said, I really love this one. I really love this one. And it turns out one of the websites that they presented us to, to a, they presented us with was a premium WordPress theme that we were able to use and customize for their needs. So we're still able to make it look different, but the navigation that they love so much, the style that they love so much, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel this helped us just kind of grab a base to start with. The next trend, oh, I better hurry up. The next trend we're seeing is minimal photography. So it's kind of that floating object look that we're seeing in a lot of websites. This has been used in e-commerce for a long time, but now we're seeing it used in more informational sites as well. And it's a trick that really just draws the user's eye to a particular object. This is an example of how we use it on our contact page. Again, super simple, it's just one image, but it really gives that feeling of, you know, when you come meet with us, it's friendly, and it just gives a nice feeling with a very simple image. So if you have an existing site, you can just easily switch up a header image or a background image and give a completely new feel to your site. Whenever we're working with images, no matter what images you work with, please, for the love of God, make sure they're good quality with no distortion because it gives a really bad impression that you're not paying attention to detail when your images are skewed or anything like that. So make sure they're resized for you know, mobile, tablet, desktop. Make sure you take the time to have good image quality. So the last trend that we're going to look at is augmented reality. This is not a website. This is actually the IKEA app. But I think it's worth showing because it's really cool. And I think this is something that's coming heavily into um, design right now, web design. So basically, the idea is you pick a piece of furniture and you get to explore what it looks like in your space. We're already seeing this now on uh, retail sites as well. So this is the Bone Look eyeglasses website. All their frames are actually made here in Montreal. And if you take a look, you'll see Lucas in the back sitting over there. Uh, try, he's going to be trying on a pair of sunglasses for you guys. <laughs> Looks good, right? <laughs> so they're still glitchy. They're not perfect in terms of how it works. But <laughs> it's fun. It adds an element of you know, excitement and engagement with users in your website. So it's something fun to keep an eye out for. So just to recap, here's a list of all the different trends that we w just went through. And if we come back to breakfast, so which one are we seeing here? We're seeing the bold colors, that neon kind of aqua. We're seeing high contrast. We're seeing the minimal photography. And actually, on the top, it's kind of hard to see, but on the top of this container, the lettering is getting mixed up with that vanilla stick. So it's in front, behind. We're seeing those trends everywhere. And if you look around you, I think you're going to start noticing a lot of those trends in more than just print or web. You're going to see it everywhere as well, even in the WordCamp banners. So when you think of a user landing on your site, I think it's important to think of the journey that they're going on and the fact that you're leading them on a journey. You're, t you're trying to tell them a story. So what are you trying to tell them? And what kind of stops can you make along the way, along that route, to make it interesting and delightful for them that they're going to want to stay longer and keep going down that journey with you? Where are you guiding them? So. What do I think is next in terms of trends? I think we're seeing a lot more interaction, artificial intelligence, chatbots, and a more customer service, personalized shopping approach. We're seeing a lot of that. And I think basically in terms of design, we're seeing a free-for-all. If you look at these sites, none of them look the same. They're all really different. And I think that's exciting. We're at a really exciting point in web development and design where anything goes. So if I can give you any advice, it's really not to be afraid to take chances, try new things in your design, experiment, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't, that's okay too, because nobody will probably realize that it doesn't work, they'll just think it's something new and different. So <laughs> don't be afraid, try something new, and just have fun with the web, because that's what we're all here to do. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Any questions?
Oh, that was a lot of content. Yes. You know, it's hard to know exact. Yes, sorry. So what, what the question was, was how can you predict what the trends are? How do you know what's coming next? And, you know, I think even people that are saying they're experts in trends and pr forecasting and predictions, they're just educated guesses. You know, at the end of the day, nobody's going to predict exactly what's coming. But I always think we should look at the world around us. You know, we can't design in a bubble. Look at what's going on around you in terms of trends in interior, in packaging, um, look to the Pantone color of the year. How are those things being applied around us? And just be inspired by those things, but don't feel you have to follow a specific trend. Just because it's coming or it's out there doesn't mean it makes sense for your brand or your business to, to follow suit with that. You also don't want to end up in a case where, like, you know, 1980s style, right? You see acid wash jeans, the mullet, the frizzy hair, the big hair, the hoops. If you put every single trend that's happening in 2018 or 2019 that's going to come right into your design, people are going to go, oh, 2018 website. You don't want to do that. So feel free to kind of pick and choose and make your own mix and don't worry too much about trends and worry about what looks good and what feels right for whatever project you're working on. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I think that's use. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, he was asking if I think it's worthwhile for agencies or other places to make custom fonts to use. I think interesting type is always great. There are so many thousands of fonts out there. I don't want to discourage type designers because we need you. But do I think you always need a custom font for a project? Probably not. Um, it could be an interesting place to use, let's say, if you wanted to create a special font for a header, but you want to make sure that it's going to be accessible and usable. So Google Fonts are a safe bet and things like that, Typekit, just to make sure that when you put out this great font, people can see it. Any other questions? Yes. Whichever one. Uh, so the question is, out of all trends, which is my personal favorite? Um, I'm really excited about the whole idea of well, it's gone. Um, <laughs> about just the fact that everything goes. It's really a free for all. For me, that's really exciting because it means we can start to experiment and try different things, and that's exciting. I do also really like the minimalist photography. I think that's really fun and inspiring, and helps me think in a creative way. Because if you're only using a couple of elements on your imagery, how can you make those? images really exciting. What can you do? What colors can you try? What objects can you use? How can you make it floating in space? Like, that's fun. Yes? That, I don't have data on that, but I will repeat the question. Um, so the question is, if you do update the design and the look of a website, does that translate necessarily to more sales or a better engagement or a more trafficked website? The answer is, I, I don't have information on that, but do I think it's important for you know, users that are more and more web savvy to see that you are taking that time and making that effort to keep up to date and give them a beautiful experience? especially in e-commerce, I, I do think it's worthwhile. Yeah, I definitely think it's valid. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the answer is, are there alternatives to WooCommerce that would give a simpler, more minimalist feel? Um, none that I can speak to offhand, to be honest. Usually when we've done e-commerce sites, it's typically using WooCommerce. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are two really great points. So one point was uh, regarding the WooCommerce. So you can, you don't have to use the out of the box model. You can customize it to make it leaner and more visually appealing. And the other comment was also awesome about A/B testing to compare two different designs, um, one next to the other, and get some data and user uh, feedback on which one is going to work better for you. Anyone else with questions? Well, thank you guys so much for coming. And oh, sorry, yeah. In terms of design of the comment section? Mm, I mean, the only areas that I can think of to make the comment section more interesting would probably be in terms of the design of how they're liking or sharing or that comment box is maybe there's some cool images or micro animations around it or something that draws the eye to it. Uh, beyond that, I haven't had much experience with customizing comment sections, so I can't really speak more to that. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys so much for coming. If you have questions afterwards, I'll be around at the after party.